when it comes to choosing a youth sports organization, things can get confusing and highly emotional for both parents and players. When passions run high and define success at the highest levels they have to, it can be very difficult to step back and figure out what's right for your children. There are a number of factors that lie at the heart of the discussion regarding whether to pursue a pay-to-play, club-level sports environment. These factors are vital building blocks to help parents and young athletes to begin to decide how much they are willing to invest financially, physically, mentally, and emotionally in the sport or any organized youth activity of their choice. Here are four key factors broken down into subgroups to help focus this discussion and provide as much direction as possible. Please note this discussion is about youth sports options. These options are not sport specific and they can be applied to any organized youth activity. The first factor is commitment. The path to greatness in any endeavor requires a great deal of commitment. A young person cannot become a great musician or a great athlete or a great anything without spending a great deal of time practicing, owning their skills, and absorbing as much information as possible as often as possible. Our capacity for learning and growth is staggering. Repetition and commitment to a singular goal lies at the heart of most success stories, no matter what the activity is. The second factor is cost. Most communities have inexpensive options, but most of those options are run by volunteers who provide a gateway into whatever activity they're offering. It's a big jump from the local little league to the major leagues, and similarly, from a community theater to Broadway. These big jumps don't come cheap. They require specific training, travel to practices, and travel to competitions or performances. Unless you plan to put your preteen on a bus to Manhattan or to MLB spring training in hopes that they make it, you need to plan on making those trips right along with them. You're also going to have to make sure they have mentors and coaches that are right there with them as well. Great coaching and great programming costs money, plain and simple. The next factor is community. If you're going down the path of the truly committed youth athlete, you're going down that path of the community that forms around your chosen club or team. You'll miss local events because you have to travel to regional and national competitions. You'll have to leave town and travel when other families would be planning a relaxing weekend, working around the house, and firing up the barbecue. Your new community may be an outstanding and fulfilling experience for you and your child, but you, like your child at his or her sport, will have to be committed to this new community. You can't skip out on important dates, you can't show up late, and you also won't likely have much say in the schedule it's created. Parents with multiple children may well find themselves deciding when and where they're able to support each of their children in their varying efforts. We can only be one place at a time, and at the elite level, that place is often far from home. The next factor is competitive level. Honestly, there's a level for everyone. You can play soccer, baseball, basketball, participate in a chess club, and try out for part in your local theater's production in most towns. Most towns and regions have any number of opportunities. You can roll your son in a yogi camp and then run him over to basketball practice and top it off with t-ball. You can never leave your own house and still be awash with options in any number of completely visible activities. That said, there is a limit to how big you can go if you only participate in any activity at the local level. If your youngster has that passion and really wants to find out how far he or she can go, you need to begin to pursue increasingly competitive opportunities. At each stage, you should be able to see if your child can compete at that level or not. If they can compete and succeed, you can continue to search for the next level. If they can't compete, you have to make the difficult decision to help push them towards that next level, or perhaps help them shift their focus to an activity that more suits their skill set and needs. In conclusion, the expansion of opportunities for our young athletes has been exponential in the last 10 to 20 years. Most communities are awash in clubs and organizations that all offer plenty of training and development in team sports or the arts. Once again, the key to all of this is that you find what's best for your child. Just because a neighbor loves their child's coach doesn't necessarily mean that your child will thrive in that environment. If our children are the commodity that private youth sports clubs now trade, then we as parents need to make sure that we covet and protect the value of our children's participation. We need to do our due diligence and find out as much as we can about the realities of what our children's participation will include. Once you've done your homework, when your child starts to pull you in their chosen direction, you can go down that road with confidence as you watch your child hopefully thrive in their chosen environment. Always make sure that your child is getting what they want and need. Also, make sure your family environment is enriched, not diminished by your child's participation, and always make sure that as their parent, you're seeing the appropriate developmental environment that they deserve.